All right, here we are again. My name is Lance Ash, and I'm heading to work on a rainy night. And it's supposed to freeze sometime during the night, so I have to be careful coming home. Oh my god. Anyway, um, the, all these houses are lit up for Christmas. What a scam. I don't have any topics today. Had a pretty good weekend. Oh, there's a gathering at Mary Nury's place. Mary Nury is uh, uh, some woman. I don't know much about her personally, but she bought the building where, uh, when I was a little kid, the post office was in half of it, and there was a general store on the other half. That building's old. And she's turned it into some sort of gathering place for uh, people in the area to listen to music or about something. I really don't know what the situation is. But anyway, um, so, finished a painting this weekend, and that's going to be the last painting I do for the year, which gives me 25 paintings for the year. Didn't turn out that great. Eh, a little confused in my mental attitude towards it. I think it took me three weeks to do, two weeks to do, I'm not sure. Um, what else happened this weekend? Did some drawing, started working on a new song. I pretty much burned out on my songwriting. I, there's only so much you can do um, with an acoustic guitar and my limited strumming patterns. I'd like to move into doing, writing songs on electric guitar. Not heavy metal, but just, um, I don't know. Anyway, sort of Tom Petty-ish. I gotta turn the fucking brights off. I'm driving with one hand. Uh, let's see, what else is happening? It was just an overall pretty good weekend. I was pretty tranquil. I went somewhere alone. Oh, I can't remember now. I slept so hard this weekend. Damn, I forgot to bring some prunes. Okay, um, I guess we're gonna go over what's in the bag here. Um. Oh, got some Guided by Voices albums in the mail. Haven't really had a chance to, to dig into them yet. And I got something else. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, first album is, uh, first CD in the bag is Rush, Grace Under Pressure. And you know, after all these years, I think this is probably my favorite Rush album, which is a strange thing to say. I really don't like their early stuff. The, all the Tolkien-inspired uh, stuff. And, you know, fame. Okay, this is Guided by Voices, Do the Collapse. I think this is, yeah, this is the one produced by Rick Ocasek. Uh, next, we have Guided by Voices, M Mag Earwig. Then we have Glenn Danzig, this is the third album. This is uh, How the Gods Kill. Great record. You know, the thing is, I was thinking about this the other day, overall, you know, sometimes there's a difference between an al a, a band's best album and what your favorite is. Um, I think overall this is his best, al his best album, but I think my favorite is Danzig 4. Uh, next, we have uh, Slayer, Christ Illusion. Next, we have, again, the first disc in um, uh, Got It By Voices suitcase box set. Then we have Got It By Voices isolation drills. And then we have, what the hell is this? Uh, this is um, Sandbox by Got It By Voices. That's their second album. This is, um, what the hell is this? Same place the fly got smashed. That's their fourth or fifth one. And then we're back where we started. Okay. 
Ah, oh, Lord. I can't think of anything. Last night, I... I got done... My only goal, really, was to finish that painting this weekend. And I got done with that fairly early. So I had time to poot around on the computer on, online. And, um... There's a French... Uh, humor comics magazine called Fluid Glacial and um, I found several issues uh, um, on the Internet Archive um, website that I could read online um, which is interesting and so I thought um, it'd be cool to because there's so many um, comics in each issue done by different artists in, in different styles. I thought this would be great to own a couple of copies, a couple of issues of this, back issues. The prices online are ridiculous. I'm not paying $95 for a 10 year old issue of a, uh, of a magazine. Um, ridiculous. So anyway, this coming weekend, I'm going to go down to the comic book store downtown and see if they have any, any issues. I'm pretty sure they will. I haven't been in there in years. When I first started um, printing up my own comics, my own zines, I took some of them down there and um, asked them to sell them for me on commission. And... Um, some of them are still down there, as far as I know. Shitty, shitty things. Oh, God, they're terrible. At the time, I thought it was really making a breakthrough of my drawing, but looking back, it was so crude and primitive. But that's how you start off. And, you know, when I first decided to get serious about my, my drawing, my comics, I remember saying to myself, because I was just going through such a hard time, I decided, screw it, I'm just going to start drawing a comic strip, and it, I don't care how shitty it is, I'm just going to do it, and it'll get better over time, and it did. These people in front of me are driving so slow, because it's raining. My head, I'm on the verge of a headache. I took two ibuprofen when I woke up, so my stomach hurts too. I'm a little backed up. I need some prunes, prune juice. Oh, God. I really am tired of this job. I hate this job so much. People keep asking me, why do you work so hard? Why do you run around so much? I can't help it. It's just the way I am. Because if I don't, I mean, if I make a conscious effort to slow down, and then I wind up not having anything to do. And your natural inclination in that situation would be to talk to your coworkers. Well, I have nothing to talk to about with my co-workers. I don't care about sports. I don't care about current celebrities. I don't care about the music that, that, that they listen to. And I, I don't feel like talking about politics or anything. Oh, me. Politics. We're fucked, folks. We're fucked. That's all there is to it. 250 years ago, the people who created our governmental framework, they foresaw this day happening, and that's why they created the Electoral College, so that we could install a billionaire whose policy positions are directed by fundamentalist Christian crazy people. Mm, mm, mm. 
if if things go according to plan and I do get to go back to Athens in February then I will be so much happier with my Subaru I like the Subaru a lot but the gas mileage is not perfect I feel like my dad when I was you know in my teens mid-teens my dad was obsessed with gas mileage I don't have anything to talk about really. I, you know, I don't mind being discursive and rambling, but I hate the dead air part. And I can't just go, uh, mmm. I um, ran across some videos about the Trezor Techno nightclub in German, in Berlin, and. Um, it made me think once again how um, sort of jealous I am of people who are in a position where they could spend their late teens, early twenties being swept up in a scene, you know? They're part of a scene, part of a, a, a community of like-minded youths and I know I never was the type of person who would socialize. And at the time, at, at that age in my life, I was not. In, I would never have been into that kind of music. And you know, it, it involves a lot of dancing and uh, club drugs to get you in the mood to dance. And I was not into that at the time. But still, eh, I don't know certain level of regret or you know but then there's regret about a lot of things or regret I didn't travel more when I was young I regret I didn't sleep with more women when I was young mm. been reading a lot of poetry lately and it it seems to connect with me better. I've just gotten to the point where I just don't give a shit about reading long-form fiction anymore. And short stories, they always have a point to be made. We're going to teach you a lesson. We're going to make you feel a specific emotion. And I just don't care about that. I like the aesthetic abstraction of a lot of poetry. I remember, um, I've got a book, oh God, from the maybe late 60s, and it's about today's poetry, modern poetry. And there's, in, in the introduction, it says something about one of the problems that a lot of readers have with modern day poetry is that it's less easy to understand than the old traditional poetry like uh, Tennyson and stuff and I think that that's totally wrong I don't feel that way I feel that modern poetry is much easier to read and, and um, understand than stuff like Tennyson I like a lot of Tennyson I like the the, the, the cadence of it the the, um, the sound of the language but at the same time, a lot of that old poetry is narrative. And it's, you know, 40 pages telling the story of something. And I just don't care. You know. I like the fact that modern poetry doesn't have to rhyme. And it's not... But of course, then the problem is you get to the point where it's like, well... It's so free form that what makes it a poem? What makes it poetry? Ah, oh, shit, let me over, buddy. Um, I've been writing a little more poetry lately, too. I think it was 
insured in the road back there. Ordinarily, I would stop and try to pick it up, but I don't have time. And traffic is too heavy. Can you move a little faster so I can get across? Thank you. Oh, God. Mm. I'm on the verge of a headache. So anyway, like I said, I've been—I was looking at all these French comics, and I wish I could read French. And there's a burgeoning temptation within me to start learning French. But then my worry is, well, if I spend time doing that, I'll probably forget a lot of the German I know. You know, and the thing about techno music is I, I like a lot of it. I mean, I, I like some of it. But then, if you start to listen to it, a lot of it, you realize it's all the same. All of it is the same. And it's... So it's sort of like just... It's like the breakfast cereal of music. It really is. And I like the background uh, noise of the rhythm, but it's not something you can really, I mean, if, I mean, a, a lot of it apparently really is intended for you to get stoned and just sit around and just sort of just soak into it. But mm, as far as any substantive depth to it, it really doesn't have any of that. I don't know, so many different. It's one of these things where there's so many splinters, so many sub genres that. Um, you can't make any. You can't make heads or tails out of it. And there's there are people who are like, oh no, that's not drum and bass. That's dub. That's electro dub. That's uh, this. That's that. That's Detroit school. That's Chicago school. And how in the hell they get so um, into it that they're you'd be able to, able to able to distinguish? You know, I don't know. That's not dub, that's trip hop. I did make an effort though to listen to music instead of people talking while I was painting this weekend. I just, I was just so, I don't know. I did the best I could on the most recent painting, but I just, Mm. I don't know. And no, I don't I don't feel that I rushed it, but I do feel that it just I, I don't know. I feel like it just the mood wasn't there. The engagement with it with the the composition wasn't there. Went, I did big shopping with my wife at Walmart uh, yesterday. First time I've done that in a long time. And I was really surprised to see how many fringe brands of stuff Walmart has now. Like when you go down the condiment aisle, <clears throat> they have all these um, 
sauces, I guess you'd say, that you can put on anything. You know, you can put it on fried chicken, you can put it on pizza, you can put it on whatever. And it's, you know, like Uncle Bob's specialty sauce, Dr. Wilkinson's magic condiment, you know. And you know these companies are never going to make it, but people are actually making and bottling this stuff and distributing it. They get a distributor contract, and you wonder, but you just wonder, so the thing is about uh, grocery stores, supermarkets, is that if a company wants their product in your store, essentially what they're doing is renting shelf space, and you wonder how do they get the money to get Walmart to put their fringe brand in there among the Heinz ketchup and the French's mustard, you know, the big brands. I don't know how, it just, and, you, and when you're walking through and see this stuff, you're like, I wouldn't mind trying a sample of that. But five bucks for an eight ounce squirt bottle of, I swear to God, one of them was called Mr. or Dr. Wilkinson's uh, sauce. Good on anything, it said. Oh, my teeth are hurting. My jaw's hurting. My wrists were hurting all this weekend. All last week. I just... <sighs> mm, goodness me. I really wish I had ran away to Europe when I was 17 and never came back. I could have done it too. But I was so afraid to leave home. I was so afraid to leave the comfort of my parents' care. I was so afraid to leave whatever relationship I might have been in at the time. I was so afraid of not following the inane advice that my parents gave me about college. I was so afraid of striking out on my own. I mean, I would have the balls to go off for a week to Florida or Tennessee. That was fine. But to actually live in squalor, you know, and, and go hungry, I just I didn't have the balls for it. And now, you know, my first uh, tumor, uh, pituitary tumor, was when I was uh, 19. And if that had happened when I was in, if I actually ran off to Europe and, and, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I would have been able to deal with it. I wonder, you know, if my mother's right, she suspects that when I got hit in the head with a hit in the eye with a baseball when I was in second grade, she suspects that that started a chain of consequences that led to my having uh, cranial tumors. And maybe she's right. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? All right, we're gonna wrap things up here in a second. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to end on a big note here, but I can't think of anything. All right. See you later.